Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently orbiting over the surface of Minmus here. We have completed our contract for that and of course now we need to go on an orbital spacewalk near Minmus and return to Kerbin from orbit of Minmus. Now we've also collected, I, I saw that we got a screen message that we've collected 18 science. Apparently that's still 0%. I'm not sure if that's just not updated correctly or if that's just basically none of the science, but that's fine for now. So that is absolutely okay. For the moment, we are of course going to have Kenkin EVA here, and that will complete our contract parameter for the spacewalk. We'll grab our EVA report, and we will grab all of the science that we can. Temperature pressure scan, or rather temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan, mystery goo observation, and materials study. Eventually. There we go. Had to wait for the animation. We'll EVA here, grab an EVA report near Minmus's slopes. We'll hop back in and store that in case we go into another biome while resetting. And then we will let go here. And we're going to hop on over this direction. Let's open up the service bay. And we're going to... Oh wait, we need to collect this data. Let's go ahead and collect the data first. There we go. We collect the data. And now... We'll restore the Mystery Goo Containment Unit. We will restore the Science Junior. I closed the doors there. We'll observe the Mystery Goo, and we will conduct the material study. Cool. There we go. Now we're going to collect that data. That data will be stored here. Beautiful. So we'll close the service bay. Actually, we should restore this one more time. And we will restore the Science Junior as well. Now we are prepared to go in. So we'll grab on here and board. Beautiful. So at this point, we have data stored here and here. We're going to grab our Mystery Goo observation and our material study here. Perfect. And those will stay where they are. We'll close these doors just for appearance's sake. And now we're going to drop a maneuver marker here just as a timer. Cool. And we're now going to warp our way around. And we do want to stop time warp, because Kenkin is going to be hopping out and grabbing EVA reports. Cool. So we'll go to about a 50x warp. It's going to be a one hour orbit, so that'll be fine. Kenkin, go ahead and EVA. There we go. And we will continue to warp. About 45 minutes left in this warp, so we are approximately 25% done with it. And let's see what else we get here. Let's see. We've got the uh, EVA report here. There we go. And we didn't hop back in. It, it would help if I hit the right button. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Let's head on forward. Cool. So we've got Highlands here. There we go. We'll board. And what else do we have? I'll have to check the recording after this. I'm picking up a slight buzz in my headphones. I'll have to uh, look into that and see if that's actually occurring in the recording or if that's just in my monitoring. Hmm. If that is there, I apologize. But we'll see. I'm not 100% that that's in the final recording. Regardless, we're going to head on forward here and see what else we get for biomes. Looks like this is going to be pretty much it. Which is completely fine. We've got a lot of science here. No doubt about that. Oh, hello, Great Flats. Got it. Cool. And looks like we are past our start point. Now, I started it back here a little ways from where we were. So, that's to be expected that it's a little further back, but we had gone a little ways. So, that'll be absolutely fine. So, at this point, we need to return back. And I think we're going to probably end up going around a full orbit here. I want to see what this return would end up looking like. Hmm. Yeah, this is not bad. Not bad at all, actually. That's really decent. 
We're going to have so much Delta V to re-enter with. It's insane. Okay, so let's get oriented for this. This rocket is heavily overbuilt. It's intended for a heavier payload. There's no doubt about that. But it's absolutely fine. So we're going to get into position for this burn and then warp on around. Okay, right about here will do. Yeah, we're drifting off a little bit, but that's to be expected. And then this is just going to be a prograde burn, so we'll get into position for that. Cool. Boy, that's wiggling around a lot in physics warp. I don't like that very much. Let's just warp on forward in regular warp for the time being. It's not like we don't have enough Delta V to do any corrective burns we need. We've got more than enough. So that'll be fine. And let's head back to Kerbin. That's our destination. Beautiful. And off we go. Okay, how close is that? 110 kilometers? Okay, we need to flip around to retrograde here and make a small corrective burn. Actually, we don't. We have so much Delta V that I would actually rather that we just warp here and circularize. To be honest. It'll be perfectly fine. So, at this periapsis, we circularize, or even bring it down slightly. That was prograde. Let's bring this down to retrograde. Like, we have so much delta V. We bring this down to, like, 72 kilometers, 71 kilometers, something like this. And then we circularize again and bring it down over here. Not necessarily the most efficient way to land this, but to be honest... I think it's perfectly fine. We have so much Delta V that we're not using. So, let's do it. It's a safer way to land it. It's not efficient, necessarily, but it is reasonably safe. Reasonably safe. So, we're going into the Kerbin Sphere of Influence now. Goodbye, Minmus. We will be back. And over we go. Yeah, there's another 18 science points there. So that's 20%. Okay, good. Good to know. So we only need a few more ticks of that. Cool. And we are just about in position here. We're just going to lock to retrograde, but I'm going to warp a little bit before we do that. We'll be looking to start our burn in about 20 seconds here. Hang on, are we thrust limited? We are. Okay, let's not thrust limit here. There's not really a point. So now we're looking at our burn starting in about 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10. Cool. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. So this is going to burn off the majority of the fuel in our still initial core stage. <laughs> this is so overbuilt. We really didn't need these tanks, that's for sure. Cool. So bring this on down. And we're just targeting a periapsis of this will actually do just fine. Beautiful. So next at this periapsis, we're going to look to... Drop this down and circularize it a bit. Let's see, I'm just thinking about what direction we're going to be going. We're going to be going this way. So that should be fine to bring this down to a periapsis of about 20 kilometers. Just like that. So obviously we're not going to try to land this, right? And honestly, at this point, I think that we're going to ditch this stage. It's 820 meters per second and quite a lot of fuel, but it's wildly overkill. So we're going to do that. Cool. And it's much easier to maneuver this at this point. So now we're going to get into position and begin our warp. Cool. And over we go. So we're going to be entering the atmosphere fairly soon, but it's going to be a very, very low 
amount of atmosphere entry here. Let's see, we're actually going to be coming down on the dark side, aren't we? I was thinking about this wrong. Yes, I yes I was. We're going to be coming down on the dark side, but that's okay. That is okay. I mean, we could abort this landing, but well, you know what we could do is we could warp forward here a little bit. Park this pure retrograde. And just bring this down and keep ourselves just out of the atmosphere. Something a little bit more along the lines of this. Cool. That'll do. And then we can come around over here and do our actual deorbit burn. Something along the lines of this. So that way we come down day side and it's just easier to see. YouTube compression has a hard time with darkness. So I don't I don't know how visible this is actually going to be for YouTube, but probably not very, is my guess. So let's just get in position for that and we'll just come down on the day side. Cool. And we're going to be ditching a lot of fuel here too. There's no doubt about that. Like I said, this is overbuilt and we knew that when we lifted it off. So we're going to lock retrograde here. We don't actually really care about this so much. We can burn this basically whenever we want. And we're just targeting a periapsis of 20 kilometers here. So we can burn this basically anytime. This is, of course, not going to... Oh, yeah, we wanted to crash that into Minmus. I completely forgot about that. I apologize. We'll have to detrack it, though. Of course, that's not how it works in reality. But uh, that's fine. So let's just go ahead and begin our deorbit burn here. I think any time now is absolutely fine. We're definitely going to want to stow our photovoltaic panels. So we'll do that now. And let's commence this burn. We're dropping this periapsis down to 20 kilometers. Something along the lines of... This. That buzz appears to have gone away. That's interesting. I will be looking into it, but for now, that'll be fine. So we're just going to rotate over towards radial here. And at this point, we are going to ditch our boosters. Or our, our second stage here. Cool. There's a lot of fuel in that, and I don't like doing that, but here we go. So at this point, we should warp until we enter the atmosphere. There we go. Cool. And at this point, we should physics warp. We're going to aerobrake heavily, and we should be absolutely fine here. This should be a very, very simple bog standard aerobraking re-entry. We did get another notification there. Yeah, that's that same one, I think. Okay. 20% of 50% required. Cool. We are accelerating at this moment. That's not shocking, considering we're 66 kilometers up. Not a lot of air here, but it is enough to have dropped our periapsis down by half and our apoapsis into the atmosphere. Cool. So that will be absolutely fine. And this is going to be a very, very low energy re-entry. Like, to be honest, this is extremely, extremely basic. And that's because we had so much fuel to burn on the re-entry. And we still got rid of, like, 2,300 meters per second. It was a lot. It was a lot. We're starting to decelerate at a pretty decent clip. There we go. Now we're seeing that ablation really taking effect. Fantastic. I'm seeing a temperature gauge here. That will likely not be a problem. Emphasis on likely. Okay, we're going to drop out of Physics Warp for the time being. Okay. We're 40 kilometers up and only traveling at 2 kilometers per second, so this is really not so bad. I'm not actually sure why we have a temperature gauge here. Is it because we're still in orbital mode rather than surface mode? Yep, that's the problem. Okay, got it. Because I was like, hang on, we really shouldn't be... <laughs> having a temperature gauge in this attitude. But we weren't in exactly the correct attitude. That makes sense. 
So we're dropping under two kilometers per second right now. We were still in orbital mode, so the orbital mode is a little bit different from surface mode, of course. And our surface velocity is what matters here. So we're now down to 1.9 kilometers per second and 30 kilometers up. This is looking absolutely fine. No issues whatsoever. We've aero braked down to 1.6 kilometers per second. And we are 27 kilometers up. 1.4 kilometers per second, 25 kilometers up. 1.2 and 22. And we have dropped below a kilometer per second and below 20,000 meters up. Fantastic. Drogue chutes are deployable. And we are completely and totally safe. SAS does not need to be on. We can deploy the main. And down we go. Cool. We can actually grab a temperature scan flying low over Kerbin's Highlands. Hilarious. We'll grab what we can. And this is going to be a lot of science. But we'll just physics warp our way down. We're not physics warping right now. We should be. Let's physics warp that on up. And here we come. We're, we're four kilometers up, traveling at 100 meters per second. Drogues deploy, 20 meters per second. I feel like we should maybe replace two of these drogues with mains, to be honest. Eight meters per second. We're probably going to end up losing this heat shield, but I don't think we'll lose anything else. Okay. Yeah, I think we should overhaul that, but it's it's not the end of the world. It'll be fine. Worst case scenario, we lose a tiny amount of science. All looks good. We just don't want to be physics warping when we impact. There we go. Going to be coming down in between these trees. Perfect. Oh, we did not lose the heat shield. I like it. We actually don't have any science from here other than a surface sample. That's interesting. We can grab some of this science. Of course, the rest of this is not very valuable. We can still EVA if we weren't sitting on our hatch. There we go. We can EVA Kenkin and grab a surface sample. And we can grab everything here. And then Kenkin can EVA and grab another surface sample and hop in. Okay, cool. So now we will recover our vessel. That's going to be a lot of science, but also a lot of cash. Yeah, whatever was causing that buzz in my monitoring seems to have gone away. That's very interesting. I'm wondering, I, I have a bit of a new setup here, not equipment-wise, but in terms of arrangement. I'm wondering if perhaps I was getting some interference from one of the cables. That's, that's very interesting. I'll have to look into that. Okay, so we ended up getting 537.5 science from that orbit around Minmus. Nice. Okay, so our R&D, we have a lot of science in. We can, we can put in quite a lot here. But I want to check in on our mission control first. Let's see. This is a landing on Minmus? Done. We're definitely going to do that. A flag on the moon. We will have to go back to the moon still. Science data from surface of Minmus. Yes. We're going to be doing that very soon. Anything else here? Honestly, that looks pretty good. I will note that I did not have an opportunity to get another one of... We can actually untrack these. I didn't have the opportunity to get another one of our satellites deployed in between episodes here. I am planning to get at least one or two done. Probably two after I finish recording this episode. So hopefully that will end up occurring. We need to get it in just a polar orbit. It doesn't actually matter which one, but just a polar orbit here would be nice. And then probably I'll put one around moon as well in a pretty big equatorial orbit. The plan is ultimately to have a polar and equatorial comsat around each body here in ma maximal orbits. So, Fingers crossed that I can get that done fairly soon, but we'll see.
That is not a priority for on-camera work because it's just a really tedious 10% power burn for like an hour. <laughs> it's, it's not ideal. And we can't physics warp it either. So it's something that I do on another monitor while I'm doing other stuff. But with the holiday, things got a little bit uh, hectic on that front. So realistically, it looks like our next mission is going to be a Minmus landing. We're not going to be going back to the moon just yet. We do have several more moon landings planned. The first moon landing that is going to be planned is when we get access to... Let's see here. The Ionographer. So the Ionographer is a ways out of reach yet. Yes, we could grab Scanning Tech, and that would give us access to the Atmospheric Fluid Spectro Variometer, which we should probably actually grab right now. But we're going to have to upgrade in order to get this. We could get it now. That's an interesting option. For sure. I accidentally went into the VAB. I did not mean to do that. Pure habit. Okay, let's leave. Cool. So, do we want to upgrade right now the R&D facility? That's the question that I'm asking. And the answer is, yikes, that's expensive. We would have about a million left over. How much does our moon landing contracts give us combined? Okay, completion of 116. And then there is this one, which will complete eventually. One, 180, we'll call that. Okay, and then there is... That's it. For now, that's it. So that would end up paying for itself, but it would be functionally neutral. The actual profit margin on that would be pretty minimal. Let's see, green sandstone, that's on Minmus, correct? Yes, it is. We should pick that up. So we have a lot of reasons to go to Minmus. A Minmus landing would be exceptionally, exceptionally profitable for us. And we have a craft that is capable of that right now. We don't have to make any modifications to it other than perhaps what we're actually carrying inside of it. I would like to grab the surface ionographer. So I think that's the plan. We're going to upgrade R&D. And then we grab advanced science tech. And then we hop into the VAB. And we load up our landing machine. So the Minmus landing, the moon landing machine is perfectly capable of landing on Minmus. This is just fine. This is not a problem here. The only thing that we're going to want to change is, A, we do not need this miniature rocket nose. We do not need this Clampatron docking port junior. That was for a specific contract. So we ditch that. We put the Mark 16 parachute back on. With all of this parachute, we can probably try to land this whole thing if we wanted to. Um, most likely, yeah. Especially if we, put, if we put heat shields down here. You know... I kind of want to try it. It's dumb. But I like the idea. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to attach from here up to, like, directly onto the heat shield. Can we do that? Apparently we can. Cool. So something like this. The plan then would be that we return this entire capsule. Which we've done in the past. This shouldn't be a problem. Adding in the heat shields here just makes that more viable. Okay. This is wildly overkill. We know this. Realistically, we can probably move these strut connectors to here. Ditch this 32 tank. And just operate based off of this. Honestly, this is still probably wildly overkill. So that's an option, and I think it's a decent one. We're still running the fuel tank adapters here because we have to change shape at some point, right? So we may as well do that. I mean, we don't have to change shape, but we may as well. 
So realistically, what else do we need in this? We need to modify our container module. So we do not need this guy. We do, however, need to put in our, if we go into utility here, no, under cargo. We do need to put our ionographer in here. We should have plenty to get this all done. Uh, this seats three, correct? Correct. Okay, so we're going to have engineers deploying this. So each one of these is going to produce at least two power. So two, four, six, eight, and then one, two, three, four, five that we need. So the seismometer is not going to make us any passive science unless we crash into it actively. So not really passive science. The weather analyzer is useless here. No point in bringing a weather analyzer. Otherwise, this all appears to be fine. Cool. Shortening this tank means that we're going to get further on this tank, but less far here. So, like, we have less weight up this way. That's probably ultimately a good thing. So, I want to check our staging here real quick. These fire, obviously, and then the side tanks separate. And then all of these should be really in their own stage. So, we'll move that up here, and that can be, like, here-ish. Okay, and then that fires up. Yep, that's good. Those detach if necessary. And then that detaches if necessary. The drogues should really be in their own separate stage here. And then the mains can all be here, like that. That would be our staging. I would set up our crew here, but I'm planning to put a cut in, and I'll restart the game in between episodes. So we're going to be losing this. We'll just have to remember to put in a proper crew, although this is technically a proper crew. We'll have to remember to put in the Kerbals that we want in the next episode. Hopefully I remember to do that. For now, though, it is time to put that cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to go land on Minmus. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Kazarol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadowwolf, Mlohan80, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Video Games Are Not Real, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisol, Kadra, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.